Hey there, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada, and I'm excited to be here with you today. Now, I just realized just now that I forgot to draw a winner for last week's project. So last week we created, or I created, in the Facebook Live, this adorable card using the tree lot dies from the celebration brochure and every week when I create a card I always draw for one lucky winner to send this card off to so I forgot to do that so I will do that later today and post the winner so you can look forward to watching for that see if your name was drawn and that will give you the opportunity to maybe go back and comment on any of or on that Facebook live all right I'm just updating. Here we go. Okay. All right. Good morning, Shara. Welcome. Okay. So today we are playing with the most adorable suite of products. The Storybook Gnomes or the kindest, well, I'm using the Kindest Gnomes bundle and a couple of the other products from that suite. Not using the DSP today, but it is super adorable and I'm gonna share it with you. But before we get started, I wanted to remind you about a few things. First of all, a Stamp Cafe. Good morning, Mary Liz. Good morning, Shauna. Good morning, Kathy. All right, so I just wanted to remind you, Stamp Cafe, um, there has been a date change. It is no longer on August 20th, it is on August 27th, okay? Um, this is an all-day in-person event where you will get two classes. There will be product demos, um, all attendee giveaways, um, lunch, coffee, tea, snacks, um, and did I say two classes? I did say two classes. And one of those classes, um, which is the one that will be led by me, is featuring this Storybook Gnomes stamp set, or suite, sorry. Um, however, I know that not everybody can attend the Stamp Cafe. Many of you are outside of Edmonton or just not available that day. So the Storybook Gnomes class will be available to go. And I will post a link to where you can find more information about that um, in the description above, okay, or below. The next thing up, we've got the Let's Get Crafty at the Art Barn. So this is a new, this is the new format for my in-person classes. So because we moved during COVID, I do not have um, a large space to offer classes in my home. So I have partnered with the Art Society here in Sherwood Park and every other month I will be renting their space and offering two in-person classes and then also a crop option, okay? So every other month there will be a scrapbook class and a card class that you can choose to attend. And then you can also, if you just wanna spend the day crafting, you can reserve a table and spend the day crafting, okay? Um, so you can find all the information on my events page, but I wanted to share a little peek. I've been planning projects for all of these events. I've got so much coming up, but I've got the scrapbook class planned and I wanna share a peek at the layouts because I love how they turned out. So this is for the Rustic Harvest Scrapbook class, okay? So it will be held on September 9th at 6.30 p.m. at the Art Society here in Sherwood Park. Um, and there is a to-go option for the this event as well, if you wanna participate in it all. Aren't these absolutely stunning? They're perfect for Thanksgiving photos, your favorite fall memories, um, even just outdoor photos, fall outdoor photos. All right. Okay, so you can find that on my events page under the Let's Get Crafty at the Art Barn event. Now let's move on to what we're doing today. Okay, so like I said, we will be using the Kindest Gnomes bundle, this adorable bundle from the July to December mini catalog. Um, and what I love about this is this just isn't, doesn't have to be Christmas. I love these little gnomes. You can use them all year round. Any of these images you can use all year round. There is, there are a couple greetings in here that are Christmas themed, but you know me so well and your kindness does not go unnoticed. 
I mean, those are great sentiments that you can use all year round. And you can use these little images with sentiments from different stamp sets as well. So you can use them, um, keep using them uh, even after the holidays. Also part of that suite is the seriously cutest paper. One of the cutest, I think, that we've ever carried. The Storybook Gnomes DSP. And there are dies that will cut out these gnomes and this mushroom. So cute. All right, so let me do a quick flip through of this side of the pattern paper and then I'll flip it over. You almost need two packs. Like I know you get two sheets of each, but seriously, these are just so cute. You wanna die cut all of these <laughs> and then also use the back sides because the back sides are cute too. Okay, so I'll just do a quick flip through. We've got mountain scene here. I love this one as well. And then if we flip it over, look how cute this is. So cute. Got some snowflakes. Love this one as well. This one is super cute too. It's so hard to choose. Oh, it's moving up on Mary Liz's list. <laughs> it is such a cute suite. Okay, so that is the DSP. And then also part of the suite, you've got fine sparkle adhesive backed gems. You've got some blue and white ribbon and you've got the Snowfall Accents Puff Paint, which I haven't actually played with yet, um, but it's on my list to play with. All right, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, I've got some pieces that I've already pre-done. Just take that out. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I've embossed a piece of vellum using the Whimsical Woodland Embossing Folder. This is from the July to December mini catalog. And I love embossed vellum. It just looks so fun, so pretty. So I've gone ahead and I've embossed that. And then I will go back afterwards and add a full supply list so that you guys are aware and you have product numbers if you want. Okay, Mary Liz asked what colors are in this suite. Let me grab my package here so I can tell you. Oops, I'm hooked on to something. Okay, so we've got, there's a fair bit of colors. There's balmy blue, basic black, Bermuda Bay, Calypso Coral, early espresso, night of navy, Pacific Point, pale papaya, pool party, poppy parade, and soft suede. So lots and lots of colors. All right. Okay, the other thing, I've got some scraps here. Okay, the other thing that I did, I used a new to me die set. It's called the Deckled Rectangles. Do you guys remember those deckle edge scissors that were popular like years and years and years ago? They had came, you got scissors in all sorts of patterns, but one of the patterns was deckled, deckle edge scissors. I remember after I had my daughter, I was invited to a scrapbooking party and that was all the rage was using these fancy scissors and you know what <laughs> I I had a vision in my head of what scrapbooking would be and that was not it I was not a fan of those scissors not at all um, so I I thought that well if that's what scrapbooking is then it's not for me and it took me until I had my son and I was gifted uh, a scrapbook album, like a baby album for him to get me back into it, like to get me to go to a class. I, and I went to a class at a local scrapbook store and that's what got me hooked. So it took me four and a half years before I could bring myself to go to something else because I it just was not what I envisioned scrapbooking to be. Isn't that funny? You get this this envision, you get this vision in your head and it just sets you back. But just know that, you know what, scrapbooking, and I wish somebody had told me this years and years ago, scrapbooking is whatever you want it to be. Same with card making, it's whatever you want to be. Like it, there are so many different styles and so many different ways to do things just because 
um, somebody shows you one way to do it, if that doesn't appeal to you, you can modify it and make it work for you. So I wish that somebody had told me that because I had tried at that party, I had tried to make things a little bit different so it appealed to me and the person who was leading the party made me feel terrible, made me feel like I was doing things wrong. And so that really set, set a bad tone for me. So that I think that's why it took me so long. Ah, yes, Shara, that is awesome. <laughs> I had, you know what, and I had those scissors. I had those scissors for a long time, but, but I think I used them maybe twice um, because I think, I, if I remember correctly, Costco had that big um, spinning thing with all of those. I know, I am so grateful that I did not give up. <laughs> I can't remember who it was that gave me that album. Actually, I think it was Marcel's aunt that gave me that baby album for Ethan. And oh, I'm so glad that she did. So glad that she did. Actually, she was also the same person that invited me to my very first Stampin' Up! party. And she could not go to the party. She ended up being sick and couldn't go to the party. And I asked if I could go without her. Like, And that is so unlike me. So unlike me. And I'm so glad that I did best decision I ever made. Okay, enough about the, <laughs> the deckled edge. So as you can see, these deckled rectangles bring back a lot of memories for me. Okay, all right, so I've gone ahead and I've die cut two of those deckled rectangles. This is the second largest and this is the third largest. So from Knight of Navy and from Balmy Blue. And then I've got a piece of white for the inside of my card, just four by five and a quarter and a piece of Knight of Navy. This is gonna be my card base. So just a standard size card, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and fold this and we're gonna set all of these pieces aside because we need to work on this so that it dries while we work on the rest. So I'm gonna slide everything out of the way. I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper and, okay, so where's my stamp set? I wanna show you something. Okay, so this little guy, seriously, every one of these gnomes. I love this guy with his holding his hat up so you can see his eyes, but this guy I love as well. He's holding a little lantern. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to create kind of a, a glow behind him, okay? So I thought, okay, let's start, and I want it to be a night scene, so obviously, because we want, want that glow. So I'm starting with a piece of balmy blue cardstock and I'm gonna use some crushed curry just because it's a little bit of a darker yellow. And my blending brush, it's gotta be my favorite, apart from my die cutting machine, my absolute favorite tools. And I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna go in a circular motion and gradually work my way out, but not too far. I think that's probably good. Okay, so that's gonna be our glow. Let me just see, maybe a little bit further out. A little bit out, a little bit further to the left here. Okay, so can you kind of see where I'm going with this? And then I'm gonna bring in some balmy blue and my blue blending brush and just kind of go around the edges. And gradually go in towards where I've added the yellow. Okay, so I'm just going in a little bit further. And this is, a, this is subtle, this isn't super dark. Add a little bit in this corner here. Okay, and now we're gonna bring in some Knight of Navy. So I wanted it to be bright in the center where the lantern's gonna be and then gradually get a little bit darker as we go out. So I'm gonna basically repeat that process. And just because this is significantly darker, I'm trying not to touch this too much because I don't want fingerprints to be left on this. 
This is significantly darker. I'm really using a light hand. Okay, and I'm not going as far in with this color. So really just kind of around the edges. And then I think I'm gonna do one more layer. I just love our blending brushes so much. Okay, so does that give you kind of the impression that it's got like a glow? All right, now we have one more thing that I wanna do with this. Now I wanted it to be a night scene, but I also wanted there to be kind of like a snowy look. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I'm just gonna grab a block, and I am using some of our white craft ink and I'm just gonna put a drop of this on here. And if you don't have the ink refill, the white ink refill, you can take your white ink and smush it right on the corner of this block and do this technique as well. I find that the white is a little, not quite as concentrated though. Now I'm taking my water painter and I'm gonna squeeze it. And if you don't have a water painter, you can use like a wet paintbrush as well. So I'm just adding some water to this and then I'm gonna flick. And I'm flicking all over my table. <laughs> it's hard to control where it's going. Okay, there we go. That's good. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab a paper towel, which I forgot to grab here. Thankfully, everything's at arm re arm's reach here. Okay, and then you wanna clean this up. You don't wanna let this dry on your block. And same with your water painter. You don't wanna leave this ink on here. So I'm just gonna squeeze it out, or squeeze some water out just a few times and run it on the paper towel just to get most of that ink out of there. Yes, you could definitely use um, use this idea, this background idea for fireflies. That's right, Mary Liz, that's a great idea. Okay. So now we're gonna set this aside so that we can let that dry because we've got some bigger clumps on there and I'm just gonna wipe the table. Hopefully I didn't splatter my iPad. Okay, so while that dries, we're gonna do some stamping and some coloring. So I've got a scrap piece of white. This, don't worry about that edge. I just grabbed it from my scrap bin. I must have used one of my border dies on this piece. And I'm gonna use this guy and stamp him down on here. And then while I have my memento out, I'm gonna bring in the warm wishes. And I'm gonna stamp this on a scrap piece of paper, just closer to one edge so that I can trim it down. Okay. So now we're gonna color. So I've got all my colors in here. I've got quite a nice variety of colors. Now if you don't have Stampin' Blends, you can use whatever that you have, whatever you have to color it in. Um, just remember that if you're water coloring, so coloring with something with some water, you want to change your ink and maybe use a stays on ink, okay? Now I had some fun yesterday. A look at these adorable little gnomes that I colored in. They're so cute. It was so fun to just stamp a whole bunch of them and color them out, or color them in. So fun. All right, so I'm gonna start with his hat. And I'm gonna use Balmy Blue. So, oh, this is Knight, Knight of Navy. I don't want Knight of Navy. There we go. Okay, so I've got light and dark. I'm gonna start with a little bit of dark. and just kind of go around the edges. Oh, I have to show you something. After I color this in, I'll try to remember to bring back that image and show you what I did. 
thought it was so cute. Okay, and then we're gonna go in and add, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the light. And I am gonna le leave just a little bit of white so that it looks like that's where the light is hitting it. I'm gonna go over where the dark was, make sure that that's nice and blended so that we have a nice soft line rather than a harsh line. There we go. Okay, and then I also wanna do his pants. So again, I'm gonna do a little bit of dark Just kind of where it would be shadowed a little bit and then fill in with some light okay let's see here just catching up on the comments good morning carol oh thanks shauna Thank you. I know. Shara, I agree. Best coloring ever with the blends. I love my blends so much. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my Poppy Parade and I'm going to color his shirt. Just add a little bit of... I've used a lot of Poppy Parade lately. I need to order a, a new set of Poppy Parade. Okay, and then... Good morning, Amy. I know, Lorraine, these gnomes are adorable, aren't they? Hey there, Kim. All right, this light is really, I'm gonna have to use the other end. Bonjour, Simone. All right, fill in this. So when you notice that your one end of your blends is running low or not adding a whole lot of color, make sure that you use the other end because sometimes you can still get some more life out of the second end, like the other end. Okay, now let's color. I'm going to color the light, the lit part of the lantern. And this is another one that... So I'm just coloring just that inside bit. And then we're gonna do, let's see what else have we got here. Okay, we're gonna do his skin. Now our skin tones blends um, work great for this. So you can see here that I kind of experimented with a few different ones. So here I used SU 400 and 500 for a darker skin toned. And then here it's SU 100 and 900, which I think is what I'm using today. So those are a great option for these little gnomes. Okay, so I think this is the darker one. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the darker on his nose and his hands. And then fill it in. This one's a little bit more on the pink side. Fill in the rest of this. All right, and then we're gonna do his shoes. Okay, I'm gonna take these out and we'll put these ones back in. Okay, his shoes I'm gonna do in soft suede. So again, I'm gonna start with my dark. Just add a little bit of detail here. And then fill in with the light. Okay, so like I said at the beginning, the Storybook Gnomes is the suite that I'll be working with for the class that I'm planning for our Stamp Cafe on August 27th. Now, if you can't attend and would like to participate in this class, I am offering the class to go. So for $35, you'll get um, 
half a package of the DSP, half a package of those beautiful gems that are part of the suite, which these ones here, these fine sparkle adhesive back gems. So you got half a package of that plus all the supplies for four projects. And I have a peek at two of them a little bit later on to share with you. Um, so we'll be making four different projects. Um, and then you'll get a tutorial emailed to you with photos, measurements, a full supply list, and a link to the four videos that show you how they go together. All right, and all that for $35. If you need it shipped, then it will be an additional $5 for shipping. Now I do wanna point out that you do need the suite, or not, sorry, not the suite. You do need the, um, the dies. <laughs> Okay, I can't do two things at once here. I'm coloring and I'm talking. You do need the bundle because anything that is die cut with this die set will not be cut. But if anything else is die, it needs to be dyed, die cut, I will uh, cut it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I just, <laughs> that, that was not very smooth. Okay, so I'm just using the soft suede again just to color in the lantern. And then the last thing that we have to do is his beard. I found that the color that I like best for the beards um, is light gray granite. Now we do have smoky slate blends as well, but I find that the gray granite is a little bit of a softer gray. It's a little bit lighter. So what I've been doing for the beards is I've just been going around the edges and I just use the light. So I don't use a combination of the light and the dark. Now, of course, you could do this in like maybe crumb cake as well if you wanted a brown beard instead of a gray beard. You could probably do it in yellows if you wanted a blonde beard too. I don't think all gnomes are gray, right? And then what I did was I just lightly took my blend and where those little lines are, I just kind of went. So instead of coloring the whole thing, I just added highlights. So let me bring it up a little closer. So can you see that? So cute, so cute. Okay, so I had mentioned that I wanted to show you something else. So on this little guy, I wanted it to make I wanted to make it look like PJs. So can you see the little the marks on there? What I did was I used a white gel pen, and I just put little X's on the red after it had dried. And it looks so much like PJs now. I thought that was super cute. All right. Okay, so now what we can do is we can use the coordinating die. Now what I love about these dies is not only are there dies that coordinate with the stamped images, but they've got the pieces so that you can piece together your own gnome. So we've got his beard, his nose. You can also use that as, that as hands. We've got his hat and then his feet and then there's some grass, and then there's little mushrooms, so cute. Yes, you could do buffalo check. Oh, you could do some paper piercing, pe paper piecing with this, and it would be super cute. Good idea, Mary Liz. Okay, so now I always have to think about which die, I think it's this guy. This die will cut it out, okay? But I've got one that's already cut out, so I don't have to bring in my die cutting machine. All right, we'll save that for another project. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start assembling. I'm hoping that, <laughs> so have you added it to your wish list now, Mary Liz? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take this piece first and this larger deckle edge rectangle. Um, I'm going to be generous with my adhesive because we're adding it to this vellum that has so much texture to it. And this is going to go in the center. Okay, and then we're going to bring in our card base. And again, I'm going to be generous with the adhesive and I can see where my cardstock is where that shape is. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't go outside of that. Just because this is vellum and you often can see your adhesive through the vellum. 
So that's going to go on there like that. Thank you for sharing, Sonia. <clears throat> okay, we're going to add this to the inside. I'm kind of stalling here, hoping that my layer is dry. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be. Let's just have a look here. So does anybody else, actually before we have a look, does anybody else do this? When you get a paper pack that has dyes that coordinate or that have images that are just super cute and you need to cut them out, do you just cut them out just for the sake of cutting them out? So now I've got all these pieces that are ready to go and my, my colored in pieces will get added to this as well. So I'll die cut these and add these in here so that way when I'm ready to craft with them again, I have some pieces all ready to go. Okay, let's reach this piece in here. Yeah, it's still a little wet. So I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna do something else here. So I'm gonna bring in my envelope flap and I am gonna bring it in my stamp and cut and emboss. I move my chair out of the way here. All right, and we are gonna emboss the envelope flap using this same wood, whimsical woodland embossing folder. Okay, so this is a six by six 3D embossing folder. Now, if you were to do it, you could do it this way. Well, no, you couldn't because then your image would be sideways. So you can do it this way and fold this under, okay, like this. However, I find when you do that, you end up with about an eighth of an inch of the envelope flap where it's not embossed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my envelope flap and I'm gonna feed it in this way. So now I'm just gonna, it's, I'm gonna say this because it's important. You, it is recommended that you put the seam of your embossing folder in first when you emboss, okay? because sometimes as you feed it through, there's so much pressure that builds. If you have your seam going this way, then that pressure is going to be applied to the seam. Um, and you don't want that because then that's when your embossing folder might split. So we're gonna do something a little bit different, which I don't recommend that you do often, but every once in a while is okay. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna leave this open so that I get that embossing right to the edge and I'm gonna have my seam at the side, okay? So again, this is better than having your seam at the end because the pressure will go down this way and it's not sealed at the bottom, it's on the side, but still not ideal. Like I said, they do recommend that you put your seam in first or your fold in first. Okay, so this is a 3D embossing folder. So I've got my gray mat and I'm just gonna feed it through. And now we've got that beautiful texture on the envelope. And look at that, I did it upside down <laughs> after all that. Okay, my trees are upside down. Hey, there you go. It adds character, right? And I bet nobody would notice. Okay. So if we had done it on the other side, it would have been going the right way. So if I had done it this way instead, our trees would have been going the right direction. But we've got them upside down, that's okay. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling, but we're gonna have to be careful because this is still wet. So I'm just gonna be careful where I put my fingers. We're gonna use some multi-purpose glue. Add this to the back. Oh, I've got, I've got something else that I can do. And then this is gonna go in the center. So we've got that deckle edge on both pieces. Okay, I can trim this down while we're waiting. I just need to grab my paper trimmer. Okay, 
So we've got that nice and thin. Set this side here. And I'm going to snip the ends of this. So this one's going to go straight and this one's going to go at an angle. Okay, we'll bring this back. We're going to pop this guy up using dimensionals. And he's going to go right in the center of where our glowing bit is. And then I'm going to curl this a little bit. We're going to add a dimensional under the raised bit. And then I'll put a little bit of flat adhesive on the rest. That will give the greeting just a little bit of dimension. Pop this under here. That looks straight. Okay, and then I wanna take some ribbon. So this is that blue and white ribbon that is part of that suite. I'm just, it's about three inches. I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I'm probably gonna cut it so it's a little bit shorter. And see how both of those ends are going in the, the same direction? I want them to go in separate directions so that it looks more like that. And then I'm gonna put them together and just trim them so they're a little bit shorter. And then we'll use some mini glue dots. And my take your pick tool. And we're gonna add this right here. Put that on there. I'm gonna have another mini glue dot. So I could fold this over instead of trimming the ribbon into two pieces. I could have folded it over, but I find it adds just a little bit more bulk when you do it that way. I mean, this, this still does add a little bit of bulk, but that's okay because everything else is flat. It's just layers of cardstock. And then I'm gonna fold a mini glue dot in half. Thank you for sharing, Beth and pop that on there like that. And look how cute that card is. Isn't that fun with the yellow in behind? So it looks like the lantern's giving off that light. So cute. And then we've got our upside down embossed envelope to go with it. <laughs> All right, so I had promised that I'd share a peek at the two projects that I've already planned for the Storybook Gnomes class. Thank you for sharing, Shauna. So here is one of them. This is a little gift card holder. So cute. And here is another one, a little Christmas card. So if you have not yet registered for Stamp Cafe, I encourage you to register. We've got two great classes planned. You'll get a delicious lunch made by Winona's husband, Edgar, who is a fabulous cook, fabulous cook. Um, two snacks, lots of demonstrations, and tons of inspiration from displays and stuff. So make sure you register for that. Um, reminder, that's August 27th. And if you can't attend, then make sure you check out that Storybook Gnomes class to go because that class will be available to go. All right. Thanks so much for watching and um, have a great weekend. It's a long weekend. Have a fabulous weekend, guys. All right. Take care. Bye for now.